Okay, today I've got an entire workout to help you look after your knees. Now, as you're getting older, and I got asked this question the other day, what do you do for your knees if you're cycling and swimming and playing sport and running, and you go to the gym, what do you do for your knees to help them stay pain-free, keep them strong, and keep you doing all the sports you want? Now, maybe you've got a little bit of OA creeping in, maybe you've had some previous knee surgery 10 years ago, maybe you just got some patellofemoral pain when you run. These seven exercises are gonna really help you keep those knees good, keep you looking after your knees. So let's get stuck in. Okay, I'm gonna go through these all in order. Your first one is working on glutes, namely the hip thrust, because it's gonna be the best exercise for you to activate and switch on your glute, get it working, because that glute is gonna help your knee control, support your knee when you're doing sport, load activities, squats, all that sort of thing. All these exercises are pretty much unloaded, so it's a good place to start for you if you're sort of trying to work out which exercise you're gonna do, you know, how much weight you'll use, just do it unloaded, okay? There are some things where you can put weight on, which is like bands, but there's no sort of massive amount of weights you need to carry or lift when you start off with this. The good thing about all these, all these seven exercises, is you can start increasing the load as you get better, okay? So start off easy, that's the best way to do it, get it pain free, get conditioned to the exercises, and then you start loading up. The first one is your hip thrust. Now. What I would do, find a bench, you could be at home on a sofa, prop your shoulder blades, the bottom, the bottom part of your shoulder blades sitting on there, okay? So not sort of on the top here, okay? The bottom part of your shoulder blades, sort of, you can feel where those two wings are. Then what you do is sit in a full sort of squat, crouch type position like this. Your knees need to be as wide as your feet, and your feet need to be wide. So feet wider than your hips. So when you look at your femurs, they're out on an angle, and they're because your knees are gonna be straight over your feet. The band here, which is a sort of pretty medium booty band, is designed to force me into external rotation to keep the band tension on. Okay, that band tension is gonna give me some power through here. That's gonna give me more glute max, and more external rotation strength to hold my knees out over my feet, which is what I need to do when I run. Okay, I don't want my knees rolling in when I do sport. Okay, so if you can work on a bit of this, you'll get more glute. Now, a lot of people are doing this movement, which is your hip thrust, to get more glute max, to make it bigger. You're trying to work on strength and control and function, so you don't have to have this super heavy, okay? You can put a bar on, so imagine this is a five, 10 kilo bar, this can sit in your hips, and you can push that up as you get more progressive, okay? So when you're working on this exercise, try and start off light and then push it up. But the big thing about this booty band here is why I've got this on. It's not just to switch on the glute and make them fatigue. It's to teach me to externally rotate because that's what I need to look after my knees when I'm playing sport. I want my knees to not fall inwards, okay, and do hip thrusts like this. I want them to keep out over my feet, all right? So that's one of the major important things of why we as physios use that band, not just for glute strength in here and activation. It's to try and teach me to keep my knees in a line. So that's a really nice one. Just a couple of tips for this one. Make sure you're not arching your back when you come. So you're not sort of in a back extension, otherwise you're gonna load the crap out of extension. Now if you can try that, you go to full arch and do that, you're gonna fatigue in your back. So you've gotta be neutral, not tucked under in flexion, just not extension, okay? So make sure you are neutral here and your core's tight in here. When you push up, push your heels down through the floor. And what that'll do is keep you neutral here and stiff through the section, because that's where you want to be. You want to be stable in your core here. You bend at the hip joint. So directly where the hip joint is, is behind that is the glute. So I'm powering through the glute, doing hip extension to there, all right? Now this exercise is going to give the most amount of glute in any of the exercises really, because you've got the band on as well. So you've got the band on, external rotate, and you're doing hip extension, it's fantastic. So for those of you who need more glutes in your life for looking after your knees, it's a great one to start with. Okay, second one I like doing straight off that hip thrust is your hamstring deadlift or your Romanian deadlift. Now, this is another hip extension exercise, but it's good to get the glute and the hamstring, that post chain working before we start loading into knee exercises because from this point, we start working to single leg and knee work. Um, so it's really nice to have this done first. So what I like using is a power band. This is a green power band, pretty heavy. You might wanna start off if you're learning with a light one, which is a yellow one, um, but it's personal preference. 
what you can do is add bands on and you can also add in weights after the band. So I'll show you what I mean. With this one, with using a band, the best way to do it is go tight between your feet but feet wide. So feet as wide as you had with your hip thrust, okay, so they're wider than your hips. Therefore your knees, like the hip thrust, have got to be over your feet, so meaning out over your feet, right? Trick with trying to use this as a deadlift, go on the inside of the band, so I get inside of the band as low as you can, right? If you go too high, there's too much slack at the bottom. So you want it tight at the bottom there. Wrap it around, do the same with this one, wrap it around, and then grab that. Pretend that's like the bar. So when I come up, it's like holding a bar or hamstring, sort of the Olympic bar, all right? So from that point there, what you want to make sure of is you are going straight down with your hands in front of your knees for your remaining deadlift. Bum goes straight back behind you. And when you come up, your hips go forward. So think of trying to keep your core really stiff. I don't want you arching your back, so you've got to have core stiff when you do this. So when you drop forward, don't go and stick your bum out and arch your back, okay? Your hips go directly behind you horizontally. Your hands go directly down. If you can just remember, hands go directly down, hips go directly backwards, so I'm not dropping down into a full deadlift and I'm not trying to turn it into a squat. I want to keep my hips high. I do bend at my knees, but if you notice, my knees don't really come forward too much, okay? My hands go straight in front of my knees. They bend or hinge, if you like. So when you are doing this, it's like, they call it a hip hinge, right? But it's also a bit of a knee hinge as well. Your knee bending, but they're not translating forward. So with this one, you're trying to aim for a stretch at the bottom of that deadlift. So I should have a stretch here. I should feel the hamstrings here. Not my glutes, should be my hamstrings, and not my back. All right, so that point there, when you come up, then make sure, again, you don't overcook it and extend that way, okay? You just come up to absolutely vertically neutral. Keep the weight even between feet and heels. Okay, and this one's a really nice posterior chain one to do. Really important for your knees because you need your hamstrings. It's not all about the quads. And like I said, we've done glutes before, so now this is more of a hamstring bias. It is two legs, same with the other one, so it's not single leg yet. But again, this is warming you up into it and keeping things even left and right, making sure that you're getting enough strengthening work at the back of your legs to help out your knees when you're exercising. Okay, now we start moving into working on loading the knees up a little bit more and using our quads. Now, you can go straight into a squat, but I like doing a split squat because what it does, it's a little bit kind on your former technique, especially if you don't have a good squat technique, but it also works on one leg more than the other, which is actually quite important. When we start working in territories where, okay, I've got bad knees and I've got one knee worse than the other, then you can start working on single legs. So before, with hip thrust, and the deadlift, we were working on two legs at a time. We weren't biasing one leg or the other. Now we can. And what I like using is a split squat or a physio lunge to do that. So this is, again, unloaded. Like the other ones, I mean, the deadlift was loaded, but not too much. You can make that really light, so unload as much as you can. Use a pole next to you so you can help you with your balance. If you're not used to doing these lunges, you know, you're a bit all over the shop, just hold that. I don't mind. It's not really about balance for you at the moment. This is about loading up the muscle tissue, hamstrings, glutes, quads, to help with knee strength, to look after your knees, not necessarily balance for all this. So with this, what I'll do is have a long, long stance. Don't fall into the trap of having a short stance to try and make it more stable, okay? You're better to just to hold a pole and have a long stance. One of the reasons for that is when you drop down, if you have too short, you're gonna push your knees too far forward and raise your heel. So, what you do is have a long stance, that, stay, that foot always stays on your toes, that foot always stays flat, all right? If anything, I want my weight on the front leg to be in the heel more, okay? Because I'm gonna be able to drive through that heel when I push up, so I want my weight through here. If I raise my heel like that, I won't be able to drive through it. I'll be driving through my toes, which is gonna to load me here. I wanna be driving through my heel, which is gonna load me in my backside. So, from this point, I'm gonna drop down and forward, bending both my knees, taking the weight off this leg, putting into this one, okay? And then when I come back, you go back to sort of 50-50. So if I start at 50-50, when I come down, I want to be about 75-80% on my front leg, thinking about 25-20% on the back leg, and then coming back to 50-50. If you look at me this way, I want to be parallel. So instead of how I was wide with the hip thrust, I am now narrow, okay? When I come back, I want to be that same 
distance apart. Don't fall in the trap of doing this, okay, or having that foot and starting to do this sort of thing, okay. So keep it parallel like that, okay, like you are. Same width as you'd be running, all right. So that point there, when you come down, you've also got to look at your knee, all right. So you're looking after your knee. This is where you can work on the control of your knee. Don't worry about the balance so much, work on the control, okay. So what I want to see is that knee tracking over the foot nicely. What I don't want to see is this. See, I need to use a bit of balance. What I don't want to see is this. See how that crosses over, okay? You want to keep the external rotation, which is your glute, all right, going. So you're trying to train your brain. When you do something automatically, you can't think about it. So training your brain to say, okay, keep my knee externally rotated instead of internally rotated, which is sort of neutral, right? You're ex using your external rotation. You'll feel this more in your glute in here when you do this. If you keep your knee out there, you're gonna feel it more here, all right? Dropping down, pushing back, trying to stop all the wobbles, all right? That's your mission. Looking after your knees, stop the wobbles, okay? And that's just about maybe looking in the mirror in front of you, trying to you know, tell your brain, move my knee outwards. Remember, the brain doesn't really know about muscles, it knows about movement. So you say, okay, move my knee outwards, you're trying to look at yourself and get it out there, it'll use the right muscles to do it, right? This one, again, you can load up quite a lot. You can load up with bands along the knees. I've done those exercises before. You can load up with weights like this. So you want to get heavier, okay? You want to use more muscle work in your legs. You can use the weights like that and drive up. Easy peasy, all right? Just make sure when you are driving up through there and you're trying to work on a bit of glute, a bit of quad, a bit of hammy, make sure when you come up, instead of pushing your body up or thinking about pushing your body up, push your heel down. What that will do is activate a little bit more glute through the movement. You're still gonna get quite a lot of quads with this, but with a physio lunge like that, a split to the squat, you're gonna use a lot of glute sort of during the movement um, than hamstring, all right? So I think with this exercise, it's quads and glutes are the main workers in that, okay? Can't go wrong with physio lunges. Like I said, if you want to, load up with bands, these sort of things, you can even go, or weights, you can even go with a band like this and put it over one side into one leg, make sure it's the front leg, okay? And then from this point here, there's my load, okay? So when I come down and push up, I've got a resistance to drive through, okay? These are really nice sort of homework ones to do that you don't need a gym for. Okay, the fourth one is to try and work on your hip control to help your knee. So we try and work on your gluteus, medius, and minimus on one side to try and help you with your hip control here, as well as what's happening at the knee. Really super important for people who are running or doing any sort of sport that involves running, and especially important for people who are cyclists because they don't get to do this sort of work. If they're sitting on a saddle all the time, they don't get to weight bear on one leg on the ground and control their pelvis because their pelvis is controlled by the saddle. So with cyclists, even though it's single leg, there's no pelvic control going on. So they don't get as much glute med. So we get people who are cyclists coming in with knee pain when they try and run because they don't have enough muscle bulk here. They've got the max and they've got all the thigh, they don't have the glute med. You need your glute med to control your knee, control your pelvis. So this is one of the best exercises for you to look after your knees. So use a Swiss ball. You could also use, if you don't have a Swiss ball, you can use a, something like that, like a Pilates ball, okay, a small ball like that. Especially if you're traveling or this is too big in the house, these are great, do the same thing. The Swiss ball will give you more power, this won't give you as much power, but it's still an awesome thing to use. So, what you do is put the middle of the ball at the knee. You're training the outside leg, okay. Don't make the mistake of trying to lift the outside leg, it is lifting the inside leg. So just think, when the ball is against my knee, it's the opposite leg, opposite glute that I'm using to train. All right, so I'm gonna stand on my right leg. I'm going to hold myself up by keeping my knee pushed into the ball, okay? Pressure that way, lateral way. That is gonna counteract, and some people feel it straight away. Like, oh my God, my glute's working, all right? From that point, I want to do a squat, all right? So you're only going about halfway though with this thing. So you're gonna go down with your body, sit your bum out, bend your knee, lean forward a little bit, try and keep your two knees even, all right? So what I don't want to see is when you squat, dropping one side down and tilting your pelvis. That means you're not using glute med, all right? You've got your glute med here needs to keep your pelvis level. So the best thing you can think about is, okay, if I keep my knees level, my pelvis will be level, 
therefore that'll be working. All right, so pressure on there, switch it on, keep my knees level, that is gonna nail me here, all right? The stronger I get this, the more I'm working on my knee. I'm also loading my knee joint with my body weight, so it's way more than an air squat, okay? There's body weight on this, like doing squats with weight, but it's one-legged, all right? So I don't need any weight with that. In fact, my weight is my lateral load. Okay, that is my weight for this exercise. You can load up with bands and do that even more, but for you to start with, just work on your body weight and then try and keep that knee in line. You'll probably find it's a lot easier to keep your knee in line with this exercise because you are stable with the ball. Sometimes, some people don't let their knee come to a foot because they've got weakness or pain, that's fine. You can sit back and turn into a little bit of a Romanian deadlift, but you're aiming to try and keep your upper body upright, knee forward, bum out, drop down, come back up again. Okay, that is gonna cook you on that glute in a good way, and one of the best exercises you can do to help look after your knees. Okay, number five is working a little bit more on knee, single leg strength, quads this time, over glutes. The last one, the ball squat was a bit more glutes than quads, it's a bit more quads than glutes. Again, start off unloaded, you can always load this up. Now, this is really, really good for your control work because you've got nothing to balance on. Those of you who need a little bit more balance, you can hold on to something, but I try and urge people to not hold on so they can work on their control. Once you've got the control right, then you can load it up. This is like a single leg squat. You need to be able to do a single leg squat to look after your knees. This is one of the best ways to start off with. So you're gonna think about stepping down off the box. Okay, so stepping down backwards. What you're not allowed to do is put weight through the back leg. So preferably you keep all the weight on the front leg and then squat down tap your foot, come back up. So I'll show you what I mean. If you stand on that right leg, squat down, control your knee, this left leg is hardly touching, tap it, come back up. Now you'll start off a bit wobbly, all right? You'll start off with that knee wanting to drift inwards. If it's a bit weak up in the hip, the knee will want to crash in. So this is what you may start off looking like. You may start going and rolling that in, okay? That's what I don't want. You gotta try and work on telling your brain, keep that knee out. Like I did with the other exercises, use a mirror to show you where that knee is. When you look down at that knee, make sure you're keeping it in the middle of your foot, not over your big toe, all right, middle of your foot. Standing on leg, keep the weight even between forefoot and rear foot. Get your balance right. Bend your knee, sit your bum out, lean forward, tap the foot, come back up. Now you can put your foot down and rest if you want to, but just try and keep the weight on this leg. Don't sort of offload it every rep, right? You're trying to make the knee strong, okay, and be able to ability to handle load on one side. So try, if you have to for balance, tap or hold, but try not unload, all right? So stepping on one leg, bend your knee, keep it in line, lean forward, feel that quad working, come back up, okay? Awesome exercise. If you're past that, you've got your control right, you can load on one leg, you don't feel like you're doing much strengthening work, be my guest and load it up, okay? Either with weights like this, all right, so you're under here, and then there's more load. So when you drop down, you're gonna feel like the quad is doing more work when you extend your knee, okay? Or you can use your power band like you did with the lunge, all right? So that's awesome exercise and one you should always have in your program. Okay, now that we've done those five, we're gonna start working on some isolated hamstring work, so hamstring curls and isolated quads work, so some knee extensions. Now, what I would use is a band to start with. You can always jump in the gym and do this, but if you're at home or you're out and about, a band is good. You might need a bench or a sofa, something to tie it to. Light band to start with, okay? Mini power band is still pretty heavy when you're doing hamstring curls, so just don't overcook this, otherwise you'll strain your hammies. With this one, we're doing single leg stuff, all right? So have that band lower than where you are, so there's tension all the way down. When you're using a band, you'll find that the tension on it is less when you're extended on the knee, and more when you're flexed in the knee, so it's not even all the way through. But it is kinder on hamstrings that are weak. With this though, you'll just have to get your set up right. So when you put it around your foot like that, you need to twist it and lock it over your heel so it doesn't come off, okay? So you have gotta wear shoes with this one. You just need the bench at a length that when you are extended like that, there's still tension there. The band's gotta be light enough that when you do a curl, it's not gonna blow you out at the top and you can get all the way up, okay? So that's where you have gotta just, okay, where do I sit myself? Where I've got tension at the bottom and it's not too hard at the top, okay? So when you're working on this, try as hard as you can to keep a neutral spine here. So you're really keeping your core on. And when you do hamstring, so you're trying to isolate just this in the back here. You're not trying to compensate anywhere else. And this will be quite hard, you'll find that Working the top end is really difficult, 
but this will give you a really good mid-range hamstring curls and really good to do when you have no other equipment around. All right? um, really important though to make sure that you do get this hamstring working. As hard as to set up is super important for your knees. You need the hamstring work when you're running and when you're walking. So that, again, you can't miss that one from your program. All right, last one, one of my favorites knee extensions or leg extensions working on isolated quads. Super important. Even for those with patellofemoral pain, you just need to make the band lighter. Okay, don't be afraid of this exercise. It's awesome for quad strength, awesome for femoral knee problems, awesome for OA, okay? It's one of those quad exercises that you just have in your program. You can do it at home. You'll feel better once you get conditioned to this. With a band, this is a pretty heavy band, but you can go lighter, again, like this tied around something. Now if you're at home you might need to tie around the back of a chair leg or something or the back of a table leg when you, and then sit on the chair in front of you. If you've got a gym apparatus like this just tie it around there. Then come under the bar there. You've got to put this around the front of your leg. So if I'm doing my left I need to put it around the front and then I need to twist it over otherwise it's going to slide up my shin all right, and cause irritation there. So you pull it forward, twist it, flip it over the front and then have it all flat in the front like that then it's going to lock in and not move off. What you've got to try and do is keep yourself really upright here, all right, as much as that will allow you. Keep your foot off the ground, so you're using a little bit of hip flexor and quads already, and then you go and straighten that knee out, full extension, full power here, slowly back. Some of those, if the band's pretty heavy, it's going to shake a little bit. Big squeeze here, okay, as long as there's no pain there, bend your knee, bring it back, Big squeeze again, trying to get out your reps of 10, 12, whatever you need, and making sure that you're giving that squeeze a good sort of couple of seconds at the top there when you're fully extended, and then getting right through your sets and reps. Excellent finisher, great for your knees, get your three sets done. There's your seven, see how you go with that, look after your knees. See you next time.